We often think of dinosaurs as some of the oldest creatures known to man, stomping around our fair earth many, many years before we silly humans ever turned up. But did you know that there were creatures that existed before dinosaurs? And did you know some of them were so scary, they would have made a T-Rex run off in fear, screaming for his mommy? They are scary and they are old. These are the most terrifying creatures that lived before dinosaurs. Number 15. Gorgonopsia if any of you out there are looking for a new and creative insult for others, then you're in luck. The Gorgonopsia, or Gorgon Face, you're welcome, was a kind of animal that, at one time, was referred to as a mammal-like reptile. And it's definitely not a pleasant looking thing. Oh, heads up, if I pronounce any of the names of these creatures wrong, I apologize. What made the Gorgonopsia so frightening to look at was everything, really. But mostly, it came down to the creature's unusual bone structure. With a differentiated tooth shape, pillar like legs, and ear bones, this was about as close to a mammal as a reptile likely could ever get. And yet, this is most definitely still a reptile. Or so we assume. Nobody really knows whether this thing had fur, scales, or just pure, naked skin. So calling it a reptile at all feels like a real stretch. The largest known species of Gorgonopsia was around the size of a large bear, with 12 centimeter long teeth that were clearly part of the animal's evolution into being a carnivore. Surprisingly, the Gorgonopsia is one of the least famous prehistoric creatures, with only dedicated experts and enthusiasts even having heard of the thing. But what we do know is this, the Gorgonopsia is not an animal that you would have wanted to cross paths with, and not just because of the, uh, Gorgon fit. Like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or Slenderman will come from under your bed when you're sleeping. Now it's time for the juicy topic. The Megalodon is one of the most legendary creatures to have ever stalked the Earth's oceans, having gone extinct millions of years ago. Though many believe them still to be out there, the Megalodon was a shark unlike any other. Its teeth were more than three times larger than those of an average great white shark. So just imagine how colossal the whole beast must have been. A 2014 study into Megalodon fossils suggests that all evidence of their continued existence stopped at around 2.6 million years ago, with mankind's earliest ancestors not emerging until 2.5 million years ago. Be very grateful these things are probably not around anywhere, because, considering they could easily gobble up a whole T-Rex, Lord knows what they could do to you. Remember to comment down below with the hashtag JuicyTopic, and let us know your opinion in relation to what we just showed on screen. And now, to the next topic. Number 14, Dickinsonia. We hate to say it, but this is about to become a life-changing moment for you. Things will never go back to normal after you see what we're about to show you. Ladies and gentlemen, meet Dickinsonia the animal kingdom's oldest and possibly strangest known member. Over 600 million years ago, the Dickinsonia was quietly developing far beneath the ocean surface. With no notable predators, the Dickinsonia was able to evolve without the need for protective skin or even skeletons, leaving them with an unusual oval-like ribbed, squishy body that looks nothing like any other animal alive today. This animal is one of the earliest complex life forms ever to exist on our planet and it survived almost entirely on the microbes that covered the sea floor. I think I speak for everyone when I say, I think I would have mistaken this creature for a sponge. Given that humans famously evolved from fish, it's not outside the realm of possibility that the Dickinsonia was one of the many biological steps that led to the eventual creation of our own species. It feels almost terrifying to imagine that this thing may be one of our earliest ancestors. But, well, say hello to Grandpa Happy Dickinsonia, kids. Number 13, Hycalithus. If the unpronounceable name makes it too hard to comprehend, just think of this as a fish with a backbone. 
While the Cambrian period is probably best known for the sudden influx of unusual non-vertebrate creatures, this creature was one of the first to reverse that trend. The Hycauathus is one of a handful of fish considered to be almost vertebrates, creatures that did not have a full backbone, but the fate outline of one. Along with the Picaya and the Mylokungmingia, there's a lot of debate over whether or not this animal is considered to be a prehistoric fish, but we are just going to go ahead and say that it is. After all, they must adapt or die. We don't have time for scientists to go through the whole experiment. We have videos to produce. Despite the Hycauathus existing some 525 million years ago, its existence wasn't even known until 1999, hence the ongoing debate about what exactly it is. There just isn't enough detail for it to be considered part of either group. The Hycauathus is one of the more unique fish-like creatures that existed before the dinosaurs, a fascinating flat-shaped being that even now is incredibly confusing to people whose whole business Business is old animals. Number 12. Astraspis. Evolution is truly a friend to those that are forced to endure the suffering of bullying. Take, for instance, the Astraspis, which evolved from a helpless target into a much stronger and more resilient creature. Although, it took a few thousand years, so that's probably not all that comforting. The Astraspis was a unique creature in its time, and not only because it looks like Seymour II from Little Shop of Horrors. That one's for all those niche musical fans among us. In its day, the Astraspis survived mostly from the nutrients and algae that were littered amongst the sea floor, which made it, like all non-carnivores, a promising prey. It's probably accurate to estimate that the Astraspis was eaten by just about every predator alive during the Devonian period. Eventually, the creature had been preyed on so often that it evolved to develop a new, tougher head and body armor that would protect it against cunning predators like sharks. Unfortunately, this new armor also made the 25 centimeter long Astraspis gain significant weight, up to a ton, which didn't really help protect it against predators. The Astraspis is one of evolution's miracle stories, a prey creature that was effectively transformed into something stronger. It also looked Looks weird, so there's that. Number 11, Pneumodesmus pneumani. For those of you that think we just invent names for animals, do you really think we would have thought up something as wild as the Pneumodesmus pneumani? Most of us can't even pronounce it. Not even those of us who are paid to. To our modern eyes, this is an ancient millipede, but it actually has a much bigger historical significance than that. Hence, the ridiculous name. The Pneumodesmus pneumani is, at present, the oldest known creature to ever have lived on land as well as the very first myriapod. Those are tiny creatures with lots of legs. The creature was discovered in 2004, thanks to fossils located in Scotland, but its actual age is pretty hazy. While we know that it lived some 428 million years ago, studies have suggested that it actually lived much earlier existing sometime in the early Devonian period. So, we may never know for sure. And, for those of us that aren't huge fans of millipedes or centipedes or pretty much any small creature with more than four legs, this is a pretty horrifying thing to look at. The Pneumodesmus pneumani predates the centipede by around 10 million years and predates land vertebrates by 50 million years, making this one old, multi-legged little sucker. Number 10. Nothosaurus it's common knowledge that reptiles like crocodiles and alligators are some of the last living descendants of dinosaurs on the Earth. But this unusual species is actually distinctly related to lizards and snakes. which means they too could be considered descendants of dinosaurs. The Nothosaurus lived sometime in the Triassic period, around 200 and 250 million years ago, and is immediately recognizable by its four meter long, slender body and long, extended features. Unlike many of the dinosaurs that would come later, this was a species that felt very comfortable in the water and lived a lifestyle that was probably comparable to what we now see with seals. But what makes this this creature particularly intimidating is its way of hunting. 
While it could just grab and eat fish or other marine mammals that it happened to come across, the Nothosaurus was particularly well known for its ability to dig up hidden creatures lurking beneath the seabed. Once those creatures were chomped up by the Nothosaurus, there was no escape. While this has not been confirmed by any experts, it's highly likely that the Nothosaurus is a distant relative or early ancestor of our modern lizards. I mean, they haven't confirmed it, but we just said it with no evidence. So who are you going to believe? Number 9. Scutosaurus No two creatures are alike. Some are more slender, some are bulkier, and some are just giant. In the case of the Scutosaurus, it's probably one of the biggest prehistoric creatures we've ever had on our planet. Just in sheer bulk, it's the creature equivalent of the rock. <laughs> The Scutosaurus was discovered by experts in 1920s Russia and was named accordingly, with its translated English name being Shield Lizard. That name is not unearned. The Scutosaurus was a six foot long, 1,000 pound thing with thick bones, bulky muscles, and a lot of armor plating. All that plating meant that this animal was pretty well defended against potential predators, even if it did make the creature significantly slower. But what's most fascinating about the Scutosaurus is that they were basically prehistoric buffalo, roaming the floodplains of Eurasia some 250 million years ago. Just as cows and buffalo travel in packs today, the Scutosaurus did back then. The Scutosaurus was a herbivorous creature, but it's definitely a scary one. While humans were obviously not around at the time, this animal would likely behave in the same way an elephant or rhino would if it felt confronted by a human. Which is to say, it'd crush you. Number 8. Dimetrodon angelensis these names just get cooler and cooler. Dimetrodon angelensis is the largest known species of Dimetrodon at 4 meters long. And a pretty freaky thing to boot. It's basically what you'd get if you combined a lizard with a mountain range. While the most notable feature of the Dimetrodon is that fascinating snail on their back, experts still don't know what that was actually for. The most likely theory is that it was used to intimidate rivals or attract mates, not unlike certain modern birds. But others believe that the snail was designed to regulate the body temperature of the creature. Which seems kind of awkward, but I guess nobody had invented climate control 200 and 50 million or more years ago. What we do know is that the Dimetrodon was one of the earliest meat-eating predators on our planet, and likely posed a significant threat to just about any creature it came across. Maybe it's just me, but there is something quite frightening about encountering a sinister-looking thing with a big old fan on its back. At that point, I'd probably be jumping off whichever cliff was closest. Number 7. Jacolopterus some of you out there are really not going to enjoy this entry. With that cryptic introduction out of the way, let's get into some unsettling large prehistoric creepy crawly, shall we? This is the largest discovered monster anthropod, a two and a half meter extinct creature known as the Jacolopterus. The Jacolopterus existed 400 million years ago and is an ancient ancestor to our modern sea scorpion. But when experts from the University of Bristol discovered a whopping 46 centimeter claw from one of these creatures, they began to realize that Uncle Jake was not exactly a small little relative. He was a big, big boy. In a scientific paper exploring their discovery, the University of Bristol colleagues suggest that these giant scorpions were actually an incredible fearsome predator before the age of the dinosaurs, and were especially gifted at hunting. While many predators have no patience and just dive on whatever they get, the Jacolopterus waited, and waited, and waited. The second a bit of prey moved before it, they'd tear it to shreds and eat the remaining pieces. And that's Uncle Jake. Often we complain about the presence of animals we don't like. Spiders, snakes, or minor irritations like wasps or Hulk Hogan. But it's worth remembering that we live in a very good time. Hulk Hogan isn't in the spotlight anymore. Number 6. Titanic Thieves no, the Titanic Thieves has absolutely nothing to do with the Titanic. Just thought I'd shut that one down before the inevitable conspiracy theories begin. The Titanic Thieves was a long, long marine creature from the late Devonian period. And it was long. 
not joking about that one. Right underneath me, he's looking for little tidbits. The Titanic Thies was an eight meter long creature that could mostly be found in shallow waters in Morocco, America, and according to some, Europe. What made this animal so terrifying, you ask? Well, other than its slightly unnerving appearance, this animal is one of the most famous marine predators, a filter feeder. The Titanic Thies was able to inhale whole schools of fish and chomp them down in one tasty, efficient, and very economical bite. Now, that's always scary, no matter what animal you're talking about. Once that vacuum mouth gets going, there's no way to escape it. Thankfully, the Titanic Thies is no longer exploring our planet's shores, so all those little fish are free to roam the oceans safely, until another filter feeder comes along and just completely swoops them all to oblivion. Poor things. Still, at least it wasn't us, right? Number 5. Agarochasis it's always exciting when a new creature gets discovered some hundreds of millions of years after it actually existed. It's like going into a time machine or hearing Dr. Seuss spin some nonsense for the first time. Only real, obviously. The Agarochasis benmulae, or Agarochasis for short, is a very new discovery, only presented to the public for the first time in 2015. Mohamed Ben Moula was the first to the unusual fossils in Morocco and quickly discovered that they showed some kind of giant extinct sea creature with gills along its back, unusually modified legs, and a filter system for feeding. When he came to explore the fossils in full, he found that this find was apparently one of the biggest anthropods that ever lived, measuring a whopping 7 feet in length. But this weird animal has also helped fill in some blanks for scientists, who have long wondered about the unusual gaps in the evolution of anthropods. But mostly, it's just a very, very weird creature. And it's far too big. I would argue that any giant creature is too big. But the Agarochasis is definitely too big. While we don't know a whole lot about this mysterious animal, we know that Dr. Seuss definitely did not invent it. It's not funny enough to be one of his. Number 4. Cynognathus as humans, we have a lot of weird genetic relatives and ancestors, but I dare say that the Cynognathus is one of the strangest. Technically speaking, this is not an animal that is directly related to humans, but mammals as a whole. This is really one of the first. The Cynognathus were in existence some 250 million years ago, and essentially functioned as some of the earliest mammals in the history of the world, native to South Africa and South America. These creatures were about the size of modern wolves and lived pretty much the same lifestyle as a modern wolf. Which is to say, they were very active in their hunt for food. They were not herbivorous creatures by any sense of the word. But despite their predatory nature, the Cynognathus is a relatively small creature, which arguably makes it even better at hunting. Thanks to its short tail and tucked limbs, the Cynognathus was capable of rapid and efficient movements that meant very few prey got away. As one of the first mammals to exist on Earth, much of the animal kingdom as we know it came from the Cynognathus, which is really incredible as a fact all of its own. But to think such an accomplished creature is related to me as I sit on my couch eating ice cream? I'm kind of ashamed and hungry. Number 3. Arthropleura Sure, its real name is Arthropleura, but we'll just call him Arthur. Although we should say that this isn't one of your cuddlier prehistoric animals. Actually, I imagine most people would be more on the side of kill it with fire than cuddle it but we'll see how we go on this one. The Arthropleura is the most giant land-dwelling insect of all time, which, for most of us, is such a nightmare that there's a whole subgenre of horror movies about it. Them, Arachnophobia, Tarantula, Bee Movie, and Deadly Mantis. And that's just a handful. Anyway, back to Arthur. Thankfully, the Anthropleura is not as large as some of the creatures in those movies, just due to the simple laws of nature. If an insect did get as big as one of the ants in them, they'd basically be unable to move, which might actually be scarier. Can you imagine a giant insect that just sits there? Thankfully for us, the Anthropleura is a nightmare long gone. Today's anthropods are small and a minor inconvenience. Still, we must never forget that there was a period of history that was rife with giant insects. I'll stick to the movies, I think. Number 2. Beastemonosicus Yeah, I know. Look, 
Whenever these creatures are discovered, people just kind of pick letters out of a hat and keep going until the name just abruptly comes to an end. It's not a system I approve of, but I accept it. Anyway, the Estem Monosicus. <sighs> Boy, this is going to be a tough one to try and get through. The Estem Monosicus, or crowned crocodile if you are looking to translate the original gibberish into English, was a scary looking animal that existed over 255 million years ago. This creature looked like a slightly wilder version of a hippopotamus, albeit with a very unusual crown atop its head. But in actuality, the animal only looked terrifying. Apparently, the creature itself behaved more like a cow, albeit a 13 foot long, 500 pound cow. This herbivorous animal would really pose no threat to humans or general wildlife whatsoever. But it's definitely not the kind of animal you want to bump into on a dark night. For that reason, we're pretty glad that these creatures aren't around anymore. Or really, we're just happy that we have modern cows to take their place. They're much less scary. Unless you anger them, of course. Number 1. Helicoprion you're probably thinking this was a flying creature, right? Not quite. While you're on the right track to equate helicoprion and helicopter, it's not quite that simple. There's only one similarity between the creature and the aircraft, and it's not the flying part. Actually, the helicoprion is a pretty freaky marine creature, most known for its unfortunate whorls of elongated teeth, which look incredibly like a buzzsaw, which is reminiscent of… correct, the whirling rotators of a helicopter. But amusingly enough, paleontologists actually had no idea where this odd little fossil went on the creature for over a century. It wasn't until 1899 when Russian geologist Alexander Petrovich Karpinsky suggested that they could be the teeth of a shark-like fish that the idea even gained traction. According to Karpinsky, the helicoprion would have worn the swirly tooth on its nose, which is bizarre. The helicoprion is far too unique to be confined to the shadowy corners of history. And it's definitely not a creature that's easy to forget. But perhaps more importantly, this thing is freaking terrifying. It has a buzzsaw tooth for crying out loud. What more could you want? Which of these creatures would you least like to see for yourself? Let us know in the comments. Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time.